Hello everybody, welcome to the week in Marvel Avengers Alliance. This is going to be the Moon Dragon Edition. Today's background soundtrack is brought to you by the Pillars of Eternity soundtrack. A friend of mine happened to mention this is a pretty good soundtrack. He's playing it. Uh, I do know of the game, do know a lot of people consider it very well received, but I've never played it or any of the Baldur's Gate games, which apparently it's somewhat similar to. So, we have a Covert Ops for Moondragon that released today, aka the woman from the very first Star Trek, the one who tells everybody to go find Vija. Spoiler alert, Vija's the Voyager satellite. So, the dialogue started to come up from Coulson, but I cancelled out of the game to hopefully try and record it. And what is my daily? I think I'm going to spin it again because I don't even know what my daily was. Um, but, unfortunately, I didn't manage to capture it. I think it's been completely cancelled out. Alright, not, not a horrible respin, but... Alright, so here we go. Great, Agent Coulson. Shattering the Black Vortex scattered the remains across the city. Oh god, it's the Shikon Jewel. And if you know what that is, type it down in the comments below and I'll be impressed. It may come as a little surprise that several of these shards have gone missing. Great work there. Smashing success, you might say. Oh, I'm so sorry. How are we supposed to know that explode into a million tiny little pieces? Quick show of hands, have you ever destroyed a cosmic space mirror before? Yeah, don't think so. I'd like to remind you that this could have been easily avoided if you trusted and allowed S.H.I.E.L.D. to secure the Black Vortex in the first place, star asshole. Agent, we need you to lead a team and recover those Black Vortex shards before they fall into the wrong hands. And here comes Moondragon saying she can be of assistance. I still share a connection with what remains of the Black Vortex. I can use this connection to pinpoint their locations. To Vija. I'm sorry, Miss Douglas, but we can't allow you in the field with your condition. With, you know, with your baldness and whatnot. And does anybody see a coat hanger here in her boob window? I mean, look at this. There's the hook for the rod, and there's the triangle. She has a coat hanger boob window. And I guarantee you, now that I've said that, you'll never be able to unsee that. Coat hanger hook, coat hanger, boob window. I have ruined... Moon Dragon for you. Congratulations. I'm going to pat myself on the back. My condition. You mean the residual compulsion to protect what remains of the Black Vortex? You may be right, of course. I am sure that someone with my mental training could never resist the remaining compulsion. If you are so inclined to aimlessly search for cosmically powered shards that may result in the very least of the annihilation of humanity, then be my guest. Of course, any valuable intel you can provide will be put to good use. Excellent choice. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go wash my bald dome with some wax. Surf wax. Agent, any new information for Moon Dragon will be passed along, but for now, get out there and grab those shards and stop staring at her coat hanger boob window. Uh, so I've already done the Moon Dragon simulator once. It was pretty fun, pretty easy. Black Vortex shards can be purchased from the store or do the daily. You do need Mantis for the simulator, so make sure she's not trading or on the flight deck. So let's go back and do the sim again. Mantis and Moondragon are, you know, they're pretty similar. Moondragon introduces a force cage mechanic similar to Invisible Woman. So there she is looking extremely stern-faced. And we come in with Cosmic Dragon S, the Final Fantasy Wall Bosses, and Cosmic Ronin. If we take a look at my agent, I have the Staff of Agony equipped. I think that's a must for this. But I have Ruda, Lantern, Agony, Weather Control Device, and Master Sword. So we have Coat Hanger Boob Window, and we have Green Hulk Star Lord with Bunny Ears. I kind of had a feeling I was going to need to do this for the task, but, you know, I saw it and immediately took advantage of it. It was actually up before the dialogue came up. Cosmic power fuels Black Vortex's abilities. So, 
At this point, I think what I started off doing... Let me see. Did I AOE? Actually... I'm gonna go for Ronin to get the Infiltrator going. As you can see, you know, it's a fairly peppy hit for a Psychic Attack. And of course, we have Psychic Vampire over here and the 20% for Mental Anguish. Uh, looks like nobody got it. Everybody went from 2 to 3 debuffs, which... Oh, nice going Master Sword. You can thank the Scroll of Rudimaroth for that. I'm still going to go on record and say Black Vortex is the coolest sprite this game has ever, ever made. It is just... I, I like it. It's it's really fun. Uh, let's see. Does he still have Kree Speed? Yes, he does. So you know what? You get the Psychic Blast. Because your multiple actions are going to do you in. And we'll go pound on Cosmic Dragon this. She does Summer and Magipora, which is of course going to result in a nice counter. Still not exactly too sure what Wrath does. Black Vortex does Wrath and the enemy team farts and... I'm not really too sure what that's all about. So in this round, I like to use the AoE. I'm going to clean myself over here. Because we've got a few things going on. Including Winded, which is not going to be that much fun for Mantis. And... Let's hit him with the magic. So there's the Rising Up squat with the Meditation Trance from Mantis. Cosmic Dragon is down. Huh, can't say I've seen Into the Void before. Hammer Smash hit quite hard. So this is a very interesting ability in the fact that it exploits Force Cage. Which is kind of unique. It's one of the only people who can do something like that. Because most things, of course, as you know, are blocked when you are Force Cage. Even things that, you know, you attempt to go ahead and do. I haven't messed around with that yet. I haven't force caged anybody and then exploited it. I hope, as you can see in some of my recent videos, that Master Sword is pretty cool. I'm actually thinking of a interesting team-up with the Master Sword and something else coming up in the future. I'll let you know in the Monday wake-up call if I ever wind up doing something like that. Alright, Ronin should be able to just melt. So I'm going to focus some raw damage. Wow, Ronin! Where are you getting around with these extra attacks from? Goodbye to you. There's the rising up squat. Wow, nice hit, considering there was no Force Cage to exploit. That was pretty cool. And, as you may know, you cannot do any uh, friendly deploys in this, and you can't get access to your inventory. So you definitely want to make sure you come into this well prepared on the agent. I would say cleanses would be pretty good. Healing, you don't necessarily have to worry about healing too much because Mantis can do that.
actually going to go ahead and clean now because we don't want those bleeds on Moon Dragon. This one is taking a little bit longer than the first time that I had gone through it, but the staff looks like it's going to end it. Ooh, wow. Big crit. So, Final Fantasy wall boss dies again. Assemble, so they were Avengers, Martial Arts Masters, although I didn't know that about Moondragon. Guardians of the Galaxy, Celestial Madonna, Mind Games. So that's a psychic team up. And there we go. Alright, let's take a look at what today's daily is. Flyers. We get a Black Vortex Shard. So I wonder if that means we have to go through 21 groups of dailies or if they will actually drop during the mission. Alright, let's see who we're going to do with flyers. So first I'm going to go to my most recent people. Oh yeah, sure. Beetle and Wasp. Yep, yep, liking that. Beetle and Wasp. And who else are we going to do? Yeah, Falcon, right. Tell me more, Falcon. You know what? Omega Sentinel. She'll be good for some healing and cleansing if needed. I kind of always enjoyed bringing in Omega Sentinel for the Flyer Dailies. She's, you know, she's kind of a jack of all trades. Don't underestimate her power to help out when you do these. As you can see, the shield ability on Beetle's level 1 next to her ISO helps out. And every time she does that level 1 follow-up, of course, she will be refreshing that shield. No need to worry about cleansing that off too much because we're just going to end this right here. Ta-da! Now obviously there are some flyers that are technically flyers even though they look like they're on the ground for the sprite. But in fact they're not and Wasp is one of them. Uh, I'm kind of infiltrator heavy so I think I'll leave Lizard. I really should give Omega Sentinel a little bit of love and give her a level. She's just lower on the priority list, but you know, she is pretty handy. And she's one of those people that has that tactician bug, where because she is multi-class, she can go ahead and get a tactician bonus by switching to a tactician in the first round. So now we can see that her indexing has procced. She's got her scrapper abilities, but she is listed as a bruiser, and that is because of the indexing ISO. So this is going to count as a bruiser, not a scrapper. So now she's double enraged. And by going to her actual bruiser kit, She's now a bruiser. She's only capable of switching to anti-classes if it's a class that she's capable of being. So Doc Ock attacking her would convert her to an infiltrator, but since she does not have that in her toolkit, she can't do it. She can only transform into a bruiser or a scrapper or a tactician. Pretty nasty beetle hit, considering there was not a lot of opportunistic debuffs out there. So we're getting Cleave, Big Guns, Aviary, Red in the Ledger, Fully Armed, Anti-Precog, and Insectoids. Which kind of sounds like an 80s cartoon show, doesn't it? Insectoids. Coming out of the garden and shitting in your house. Insectoids. 
That sounds kind of bad, doesn't it? Yeah, so turn order was going to be a little crazy on this one. What I'm going to do is first round tactician to turn off the scrapper bonuses on both of these guys. Apparently, Beetle is just going to town here. Why was she getting follow ups? Huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, the trigger dice so duh. I set her up that way and then completely forgot about it. So it is possible for Beetle to do three attacks in one round with the hair trigger ISO. And that's three sets of opportunistic debuffs. Really sets her up nice to just obliterate that person with the big Bertha. Hopefully, in the next time Beetle gets her attack, the usage of her level 6 will ensure that she's got enough stamina to do a Big Bertha. And then she's probably going to kill Lizard. Probably won't kill Mysterio. Oh yeah, Lizard's definitely going to die. Oh yeah. Okay, well then. Go ahead and light Mysterio on fire. And let's get a little bit of buffs here. Oh, good. Mysterio's gonna die. Quick and dirty daily with a 24k finish. So, Glass Tan, which is the original, custom only for kidding, killing pretty cool, the Toolbox, the Bishop, and the Mysterium Manifold. You know, I wouldn't mind a Mysterium Manifold. I think I may have one now, but I definitely have a custom only for killing. I think I even have a modern one. I have the Bishop, have the Glass Tan. I wouldn't mind one of these, just in case. Alright, sure. Just in case I don't have a 305 leveled Kofuk. That's pretty cool. So let's see that shard roll in. Two and a half stars. Pretty nice. And there's the Black Vortex shard. So it looks like 20 more days unless we purchase... We'll have Moon Dragon. Let's see how expensive they are. Three gold a piece, maybe. I'm gonna guess three gold a piece. Yep, three gold a piece. So you know, honestly, for sixty gold, you can have her. And if they wind up doing a sale this weekend. I think a lot of people are probably going to do that. They're probably just going to buy Moondragon outright. I honestly would make sure you go through the sim first with the Moondragon they give you, then buy her. Maybe tempting. If they do have a gold sale this weekend, I might actually do that. But let's take a look at her here. Foreboding Sensitivity. Takes reduced damage from counterattacks and follow-up attacks. So she negates a infiltrator ISO right off the bat. That makes it easy. Mental perception has a chance to grant allies an action that cannot be interrupted before Moon Dragon takes in it. Wow, that's wordy. So maybe in a turn she just makes them do a random follow-up? Takes less damage from psychic attacks and effects. Removes one negative psychic effect every round. So if we say that we're going to give her the covert ISO. If she counters with a psychic beam. And she gives herself rising up every time she does it. 
and everybody wow she could definitely be a linchpin of a psychic team very very interesting mind suppression is the multifunction we have the psychic cage which is a force cage we have telekinetic shielding which mantis has the psychokinetic shield and we have psychic push is that maybe from the movie push remember that movie all enemies intimidated and weak mind that is really solid especially for a quick action mental blast cerebral agony perforating combo it exploits force cage it exploits shields gives herself finest hour one enemy immune to force cage so i guess the person she hits then can't be force caged anymore so maybe that even knocks them out of the force cage so maybe invisible woman can hold somebody off perforating combo hurts them for a good amount of damage and then removes the force cage so that they're susceptible again something that i want to take a look at over here with phoenix let me take a look at this passive attacks become psychic energy bypassing i i still think we might see some p5 phoenixes coming into play uh with this new psychic stuff it's really a strong possibility so guys there we go there is the week in marvel avengers alliance over in marvel avengers alliance 2 nothing new is going on over there although apparently there's getting to be a lot of flack and fallout from the most recent patch and a lot of people are just getting further and further upset with the game i'm definitely hearing a lot of complaints about pvp although honestly it's settled in for me i've been fighting you know full-on 30s the last few days because i keep getting a pvp task like win a pvp and you know i went up against flat 30s earlier and didn't even lose a person even though i took some significant damage it was hulk uh iron man and a black widow maybe and I was like, oh god, it's Black Widow. But yeah, I, everybody lived. Wasp did her tanking. She lived. My Hawkeye lived. Thor was doing good. So maybe things are settling in over there. You know, plus we have the new chapter and a new hero. And I'm receiving reports that if you do buy the expensive PvP cell, you will get a hero that you don't have. Um, one of uh, friends of the channel posted a shot that he got Angela, who he didn't own. So maybe you'll get some value out of that shard, but I still think it's a little expensive. And of course, there is a very political discussion going on about spending $30 to get stuff before the game was even released in your country. Definitely some stuff there. Marvel Future Fight recently had a, another update that rolled back the one-on-one -on -one Battle World stuff, I believe. And Marvel Contest of Champions has another Civil War going on where you fight to get a hero. I think it's called Civil Faction, maybe? It's kind of like a Iron Pepsi-looking Captain America, if I remember correctly. So there's definitely some interesting stuff going on in Marvel games now. Thanks a lot, everybody, and thanks for checking out the video. And also, by the week's end, they'll be releasing the 1K subs video, which is now up to 1K11. See you, folks.